He says, uh, you know, Paul is saying the law is abolished. You don't need to follow the law. Jesus died for your sins. The law is finished. You just need to love God. This is, these are the words of Jesus in Matthew. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, meaning until the end of time, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commandments and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commandments will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Look at the message of Jesus. If anyone decides to say, no, these commandments don't matter, set aside these commandments, he'll be least. That's exactly what Paul does. Look at another incident in Matthew. A man comes up to Jesus and says, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Jesus' basic reply was, there's only one who is good. If you want to enter life, eternal life, keep the commandments. That's the, that's the message Jesus was preaching his entire life. If you want to get into heaven, if you want to keep the commandments, there's, there's, you don't find anything else from Jesus. <clears throat> and we find that Jesus even made the commandments in certain instances, we saw that in Zina, he said, even looking at some of those commandments, encounter the love sheet. Here he say, he makes it even stricter. He says, you have heard that it was said to keep the law of God, you shall not murder. And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. So what you say, yes, the, uh, Jesus is saying, yes, the law is saying, you know what, D uh, don't murder. I'm saying don't even get angry with a brother or sister. He's teaching you good manners. He's teaching you that you have to follow the law. Constant throughout the life of Jesus. Now, an objection Christians will make that, you know, the Pharisees, Pharisees refers to a group of Jews who were living at the time of Jesus. Jesus, and they used to follow the law, Jesus carried on criticizing them because they only followed the law and they didn't love God. Therefore, we mustn't be like them. We mustn't follow the law and we only love God. But look at what Jesus himself said. Jesus says that when he's addressing the Pharisees, in the same way, on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. So Jesus was criticizing them because in public they would follow the law, but in private they wouldn't follow it. He wasn't criticizing them for following the law. This is a common objection that comes. And we can see that it's quite clear in this verse. Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees said he goes into the sea. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you. He's telling his disciples, whatever they tell you to do from the law, follow the law. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. So don't be like them, they preach and they don't practice. Follow what they tell you. So again, a constant message throughout the life of Jesus. What about the disciples after Jesus? In Acts, in the book of Acts, the chapter 2, we see the disciples are going to the temple preaching and gaining followers. This can only be the case if they were observing the Jewish law. The Jews wouldn't allow them, they also wouldn't allow them there if they were not following the law. In Acts, again, Acts is about the disciples. We see a man named Ananias, he was a devout observer of the law. Clearly, he says that. And if you look at the book of James, which was apparently written by the half brother of Jesus, you find, you look at what he's saying. According to Christians, this is written by a disciple. If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as you love yourself, you're doing right. But if you show favoritism, you said that are convicted by the law as well as For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. So he's clearly against James, the disciple or half brother of Jesus, is clearly against saying the law has to be followed. The law of God needs to be followed. This was the message of Jesus, this was the message of the disciples after Jesus. Now a certain problem occurred. When Christianity spread to the Gentiles, Gentiles didn't want Jews. So, what are we going to do? What's going to happen? And Paul was the one who was taking Christianity to the Gentiles. So, the book of Acts discusses this whole issue. So, it says that certain people came to these Gentiles and told them, until you get circumcised, you can't be saved. And Paul said, no, no, you don't, because Paul was saying you don't have to follow the law in the first place. So, the dispute occurred between the Christians. Some were saying that you Christians need to be circumcised. Paul was saying, no, you don't. So Paul and Barnabas now went to Jerusalem to see the apostles to ask them, when we take Christianity to the Gentiles, which is like, you know, still a branch of Judaism, do they have to follow the law or not? So James was in charge. He was the leader of the, of the disciples in Jerusalem. He says that it is my judgment, therefore, we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles. We 
We should write to them telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols, from sexual morality, from the need to strangle animals, and from blood. And so basically, what James does is he says, okay, these Gentiles are new to Christianity, they knew they're not Jews, it's going to be hard to follow the whole law, but they still need to start slowly. So he gives them like some essential commandments and says, follow these. And Paul, when, what does Paul do? Paul heals the disciples, telling them that you have to do this. But he is writing, Paul says, that I don't know. I mean, see, Jerry. So the book of Acts is clearly telling us that the disciples made a decision. They had a council. They made a decision. They said, even the Gentiles who come to Christianity need to watch what food they eat. They need to stay away from sexual immorality, and etc., etc. So we look at Paul. This is Paul's writings. And just, I'm just going to read that out, out again so we get an understanding of how Paul is speaking. He says, Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. So for Paul, the whole point of the law was that so you can't follow it, so you become guilty. That's how he understands the law of God. He should show you that you you are very weak and you can't follow it. So there's no point to it except to make you guilty. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So he says, you keeping all the commandments of God cannot make you justified. The law is just there to show you that you are sinful. Basically, he's saying the law is too difficult for you to keep. Now look at the, at the Old Testament, the Deut- Deuteronomy. God is speaking here in the Old Testament. He says, now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult. It's not beyond your reach. It's not up in heaven that you will ask who will ascend to heaven. When God is giving his commandments, he's literally saying, his commandments are not too difficult. You can keep them. Everyone can manage them. But what is Paul saying? Paul saying it's too difficult. No one can do it. Therefore, you're going to keep the commandments. So all of these uh, quotes are quite important. Yeah? Paul, when it comes to eating meat, we saw the disciples said, you know what? You need to watch. Even the new Christians, the Gentiles, need to watch what they eat. Paul says, but food does not bring us near to God. We are no worse if we do not eat and no better if we do. And he, he goes into in detail, showing you can even, even if the food was sacrificed to idols, no problem in eating it. No issue. Completely against what the disciples are saying. <clears throat> and look at now, I'll just show other quotes from the book of Revelation. It shows, he's, she's, he's talking about a specific situation. She must lead my servants into eating of food sacrificed to idols. So even in the book of Revelation, it's considered a sin. Paul saying it's not a sin. In these other two quotes, which come from church fathers, it says clearly, keep strictly away from meat sacrificed to idols. Paul says it's a mistake. Justin Martyr, one of all Christians who come to Justin Martyr, is like one of their seventh people say that. He says, I would rather abide by every torture, even death, than worship idols or eat meat offered to idols. But Paul says you can eat meat offered to idols. So you can see here again how it's completely different. And now an important quote here to show Christians how Paul misquotes the Old Testament. So he quotes and he says, what does it say in the Old Testament? It says the word is near you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. That is the message concerning faith. And so he's trying to show that you just need to say it, you just need to believe it and you say it. So he's saying that the Old Testament says the word is in your mouth and it's in your heart. But look at what the Old Testament actually says. The word is very near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. So you may obey it. So when he quoted the Old Testament, he left that part out. So you may obey it. Because he doesn't want you to follow the commandments. So he just chopped the verse in half, quoted that, and said, see, it's saying you just need to believe it, you just need to talk. But this is another part of the verse. So you may obey it. Meaning you need to follow the law. So clear, clear, this quote from Paul. And then lastly, we will end up here in the short section. This is just a logical perspective. He said, one of our main arguments against atheists is that we need the law of God to help us with immorality, to tell us what's right, what's wrong. So, yes, certain things maybe we can understand, but many things we can't understand. That's one of our major arguments against atheists. And if you as a Christian are going to come and say, the law is wrong, the law of God is right, you just need to believe in your heart and love God. Then how are you any different from an atheist when it comes to morality, deciding what's right, deciding what's wrong? And again, as we said, it's a great insult to God to believe that his law was just there to show you that you are sinful. So just from a logical perspective also, we need to turn to it. So each other, that's the third topic of this course. It's very simple, nothing much to understand there. Just many quotes showing us doing very similar things to the old prophets. And also showing that the law is not abrogated according to Jesus, according to his disciples, and according to the Jesus So to Zakhar Rafaelan, that will end today's topic. Uh, topics and next week we will discuss the Trinity and we will discuss the Common Bible. So inshallah. Sure.